Hello, this is Jeff Walker with In-Depth Studies. Uh, today we are looking at the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 27 and 28. But there is a, there is a historical context to, this, to these two verses. And that is, Peter and John were being hassled by the Sanhedrin because they've been teaching about the resurrected Jesus. And so after the Sanhedrin let them go, they went back to the believers and gave a report, and verses 27 and 28 form part of that report. So they say this, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the, the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city, of course, that's Jerusalem, to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. These two verses form a sort of classic response or explanation to the problem of evil. Because on one hand, the crucifixion of Jesus is the greatest good ever committed, the salvation of all those whom the Father chose to save. But on the other hand, it's the greatest evil ever committed because Jesus is the only innocent person to have ever existed. But, so... This particular passage says two things. One, it says that those who did the evil, which resulted in Jesus going to the cross, Herod, the Romans, the Jews, etc., they're all guilty. They made evil choices, which they and they alone are responsible for. But it also, this, the crucifying of Jesus and, and the decision-making that led to that by the Jews, the Romans, etc., this was all part of God's predestined plan. So the way it works is God determines everything. Evil is a part of that plan. Yet when evil is done, God can never be blamed for the evil. Only those who do the evil are to be blamed. So if this has been helpful, check. you might want to check out more of Jeff's thoughts on YouTube. And there you can subscribe to them. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.